Another cornerstone of real analysis is definition. So, what are definitions? Let's look at example. Here it says definition: a number n is even if and only if there exists an integer k such that n equals two times k. So, this definition is about what it means for a number n to be even. It is a precise statement of the meaning of the mathematical word "even." So the first point you should take is that a definition is precise. Secondly, a definition is only about a single concept, a single term. The term here is "even." It doesn't say anything about a number being odd or anything else. It is only about the concept of "even." Thirdly, a definition is defined by a strict term if and only if. So a definition is true only if the condition is met in both directions. The if direction means that if there is an integer k such that n equals two times k, then n is even. The only if direction means the reverse direction has to be true too. So. If n is even, then there is an integer k such that n equals two times k. You see, the if and only if term here is very important. Then, when we meet a definition in real analysis, how can we make sure that we have a really precise and a deep understanding of its meaning? So here is one more general definition. Of a function being bounded above on its domain, big X. Let's read it aloud. A function f from its domain, big X, to the reals is bounded above on the domain X if and only if there exists a number m in the reals such that for all small x in the domain big X, f x is less than or equal to m. So this definition is general. It says a function f, but it doesn't say what the function is. So any function that meets these conditions are included. So the first technique is to think about a few examples. Our first example is f x equals cosine x, defined from the reals to the reals. Is it bounded above? Here we can use our second technique, diagrams. So this figure plots f x equals cosine x in the interval from minus 10 to 10. Of course, its real domain is from minus infinity to infinity. Here we can see that it is bounded above by the real number one, but the real numbers two, two and a half, one thousand are also its upper bounds. Then let's look at the second example: f x equals x squared, defined from the reals to the reals. Its diagram is shown here, plotted in the interval from minus 10 to 10. Its domain is the reals from minus infinity to infinity. Is this function bounded above? No, it's not. But what if we change its domain from the reals to only the interval from 4 to 8? Is it now bounded above? Yes, it is. 64 is its upper bound. So are 64 and a half, 69. 901, and infinitely more other numbers. Then, what is the third technique for deep understanding of a definition? Be precise. Be precise means to have a clear distinctions, clear differences in your understanding of somewhat related or similar definitions. So let's compare these two definitions. The first definition is about upper bound m. It says. M is upper bound for the function f on the set X if and only if for all small x in big X, f x is less than or equal to M. The second definition is about a set X being bounded above. It says the set X is bounded above if and only if there is M in the reals such that for all small x in big X, small x is less than or equal to M.